Um, so, Firefly Cup is a meta that allows five typings and it bans one specific typing being ground. Uh, you have bans on a couple very overpowered Pokemon that could have dominated the entire meta, uh, and two things that are limited in availability. So all of these bans make sense. Uh, with normal bug, electric, poison, and ice types being the primary metas, it's hard to really tell what would serve what kind of purpose. Because when we're looking at metas, we're looking at um, a fighter versus a tank versus a flyer or psychic type Pokemon. Um, they generally fill very specific roles, but with these five typings, they don't really beat one another with the exception of poison resisting bug type moves and Pokemon. Like that's the only type interaction that exists between any of these Pokemon. So with that being said, we really need to look at how the subtypings play in choosing some of these Pokemon and what makes some of these Pokemon good. It's not because it's going to be uh, ice or poison it's probably going to be because it is poison and something else or um, electric and in this case steel and steel is a typing that we're super familiar with for being uh, having the largest number of resistances tend to be extremely bulky as well and we don't actually have too many steel type attacks so a lot of these steel type pokemon tend to have really good coverage moves as well as uh, type effectiveness uh, in terms of resistances. So analyzing all the remaining types that are not part of the primary typings, because Dragology is banned, we just straight up don't have any access to other dragon type Pokemon, so ground and dragon type Pokemon are banned. And from the remaining ones, uh, their availability ranges uh, drastically with flying, grass, and a couple. So, flying type Pokemon, you see there are a lot of options to choose from. The same applies to grass, but whether it's available or not doesn't actually change too much of whether the type is good or not. So, here's the availability of the Pokemon, and on the right side, you have the, um, the viability of the Pokemon. So on this side, you have availability, and on the right side, you have viability. Viability, there you go. And the reason why uh, viability matters more is because how do they play into the other types? All Pokemon must be one of these five types on the right side. So with that being said, if you can't at least beat them, then you're always going to be weak to whatever's in the meta. For example, if I were to say, oh, flying type is going to be good against um, uh, bug type Pokemon, right? Flying beats bug. Great. But 80% of the rest of the meta is going to do good or neutral against you. So that's going to be a problem. So as long as it interacts with the five typings, we can identify what makes them good or bad. Thank you for the follow floors. So uh, we've sorted that out um, with flying, grass, poise, uh, a fairy being not very relevant. And then Pokemon up here being pretty darn relevant. Um, fighting is always going to be relevant, however, because fighting is going to be your best uh, chance at dealing with both steel, rock, and ice-type Pokemon. They uh, only... It's essentially doing what steel does, but beating steel in the process. That's what fighting usually does. Uh, so, in addition, fighting-type Pokemon are extremely uncommon. You have Toxicroak, Beware, Heracross... And then for counter users, you have a Vigoroth and Obstagoon to add to that list. So you don't actually have too, too many options to pick from. So one of these Pokemon are very likely going to be on your team as a result. So looking at how 
all 18, rather 16 types interact because these two are banned. Uh, how all these 16 types interact, Electric seems to perform the most consistently across the board. The only true counters to uh, Electric type Pokemon are going to be Ground, Double Resisting, followed by Dragon and Grass Single Resisting Electric. Note that two of these are non-existent and one of them are extremely irrelevant. So electric type Pokemon is going to be a really good place to start and also a really good place to fall back onto when you are looking for something to um, uh, fill a role without really knowing where to start. So I started my team build with a Lolan Golem as a result. Uh, out of all the electric type Pokemons, I'm looking for something that ha puts me in a comfortable position where I don't have to bait and nuke extremely hard like Magnezone does. I don't want something that's extremely glassy like Luxray, nor do I want something that has very limited coverage like double rock charge move Graveler. So I chose to go with a Lolan Golem, uh, which with with uh, wish the brain work please <laughs> with volt switch wild charge and rock blast very straightforward bait and nuke move set and wild charge being a very uh aggressive coverage move in a lot of cases so covering golem which would have a weakness to um uh, fighting and grass we have Toxicroak, which would resist both. Um, Obstagoon would serve as the anti, you know, psychic uh, problem that we had with... What's it called? With Lormanam. Um, it would also help cover some of the other normal types, such as Chansey and Lickitung. So... That's what Obstagoon is good there for. Having the double counter user with different weaknesses is also very important and very gives you a lot of options in a show six pick three because if you really, really, really need to use a counter user because that's what your opponent's team is weak to, but your opponent also happens to have a really strong counter to your, for example, Toxicroak, such as... a Wormadam or an Oranguru in this meta, then you could very easily pivot into a counter user, in this case, Obstagoon, which would beat those things as well. So a lot of show six pick three, because you are choosing six Pokemon instead of three, but you're still only using three, um, a, a good place to start is always picking two things that do the same job, but with different weaknesses. So I could say the same thing with a Lolan Golem and Galvantula, both electric type attackers. One is strong against, um, or one is weak against counter, and one is strong against counter fighter users, fight, fighting type Pokemon. Um, uh, same thing with the bug, Galvantula and Fortress. I've doubled up on bug type Pokemon. One is better against fighting pokemon than the other one is better against normal type pokemon than the other and one is also better against uh Wormadam than the others so picking six is essentially picking three and then doubling down on what you have but also trying to pivot the weaknesses a little so after obstagoon uh, i wanted something that served as a very neutral counter across the board with golem toxicroak and obstagoon i don't really have a counter to toxicroak other toxicroaks or maybe even uh heracrosses so i figured put something that much better resists counter while dealing much better damage and can take a mud bomb or a sludge bomb in the process uh which is where golbat actually came in as well at the end uh, fortress Having a steel type Pokemon is way too good, uh, especially a bulky steel type Pokemon is really good at soaking up damage, whether that's a wild charge from a Magnezone or a Wormadam that has a very aggressively farmed down either my Toxicroak or my Galvantula. Uh, having your own Wormadam or Fortress is going to help with the bulk that the team 
doesn't really have currently. So you can see PV Poke has ranked coverage at an A. I paired Golem and Toxic Toke together and I immediately got an A in coverage. So finding good coverage in this meta isn't hard. Finding good bulk, however, is going to be hard if you're not running Wormadam, Fortress, um, and in addition, other bulky Pokemon. What I don't have on the team are... Um, uh, which are also really relevant and really po potentially really powerful Pokemon. Uh, first of all, is Wormadam. Uh, just as bulky, if not bulkier, has more consistent fast move damage, slightly slower to get to charge moves than Fortress, but it is bulkier, so it can't afford to get there. Another Pokemon that I don't have on my team that people have been talking about, Litleo. Uh, there's a lot of bug type Pokemon in this meta. Dealing super effective Ember is going to, or even Fire Fang if you want higher damage, is going to get you a lot of farm downs if you do find the right matchups and picks. Frostlass, always been a good neutral matchup against anything you face off. The only ghost type capable of beating other Lick normal type users. Um, it's just that fast to get the charge moves and its charge moves are just that good as well. And then Lickitung, XL Lickitung, good bulky, soaks up damage, chips away at things, no problem. As, and as well, Lantern, last but not least, Lantern and Electrode, El Hisween Electrode. Two potential electric types that are not um, Magnezone and Alolan Graveler. These two electric types will do much better. Where are they? Right here. Uh, Lantern and Electro. These two electric types would give you an edge against uh, some of the other electrics, such as Graveler being able to deal super effective water or super effective grass against those. Um, they are much more charge move heavy, unless you're running Water Gun on, on Lantern. Um, so they are a little awkward in some cases, but they do provide pretty good coverage. They have pretty good charge moves as well. Um, and it would also give you an electric type that isn't weak to counter as well, which is why I chose uh, Galvantula. And in some cases, you could also run Alolan Raichu.